guys so today we're going to be taking a look at the Blackview app and it is available for iOS as well as Android as you can see so I do have it on both of my devices here so you can use this app to connect directly to the camera with Wi-Fi and when you do it what you're gonna see is all the recordings so you can actually view the recordings through the app at the top, what you're going to see are different filters that you can use. N is going to be for normal recording mode. Um, so basically, it's going to show when you're driving is normal. E is going to be for any event. So if there's a somebody bumps into the car, bangs into it, anything like that, that's going to filter out just those videos. P is going to be for parking mode. And M is for manual recordings that you may make. So what we can do here is just go ahead and filter out so that I'm only going to be looking at normal recordings. You'll have a few options that you can use. As you're going to see, you have NF, which is normal front, NR is normal rear. Uh, so if I tap to the right, I can copy to internal memory and save it on my phone if I like. Hit this here. It's going to copy to internal memory and then you can just select in mass the ones that you want to save to internal memory and so this is a pretty useful feature if you want to just save videos on your device and I showed this before but this is also where you go if you just want to take a look in real time at what's going on with the camera so that's the front if I hit that that's going to take me to the rear and so this is basically what Wi-Fi is going to be used for so now I'm going to go ahead and switch over to my Android device here and we're going to take a look at the Blackview cloud now what this is going to allow you to do is basically still access the camera even if you're out of Wi-Fi range so essentially in order to use the Blackview cloud you're going to need an internet connection now if you're in range of a Wi-Fi connection then that's fine you can use that or in my case what I do is leave this mobile hotspot here and I have the pocket Wi-Fi system set up I'll also be doing a video on that so keep an eye out for that but essentially I'll leave that in the car and so it allows my camera to always stay connected to the cloud so I don't have to leave a phone in here for Wi-Fi purposes now if you park your car near your house or if your job has Wi-Fi you can also use that to connect to the cloud, but in my case, I found that the hotspot is the best option for me. Now, once you're connected into the Blackview cloud, you have similar options. You can click this. As you can see, you still have the filter set up there so that you can filter out any videos that you want to. Now, the primary reason that I use Blackview cloud is basically anywhere I'm at, I'll be able to see what's going on with the camera. So I'll be able to go into Blackview cloud, click this, and get a real-time view of where my car is at there's a little map down there that you can see as well live view on. and as you can hear live view is on and there's also a desktop app which I'll show in a moment that allows you to do essentially the same thing here but you can be anywhere around the world it doesn't matter in your car as long as you have it connected to Wi-Fi using the Blackview cloud app you'll be able to see what's happening with your car even if it's in motion now there's also a two-way voice communication option there if you see that little microphone that's xed out if i hit that i i can walk away from the car speak through it and it'll the sound the audio will come through the camera and the person inside the car will also be able to speak back and you'll be able to hear it okay so now i'm speaking through the mobile app on my iphone so the audio should be recording inside of the car so we'll be able to see what it sounds like all right, so we're just going to adjust some of the basic settings. So we're just going to click the little gear in the right hand corner of the app, click basic settings, and we'll go ahead and adjust the time zones. And we'll go with America, New York, Eastern Time. And it says, please back up all important recordings before changing the time zone. When setting a new time zone, the SD card is initialized and all recordings stored on the card are deleted. So that's important to note. If you ever change your time zone, it's going to reformat your card. 30 so let's just take a look at the resolution and that's the highest we can go so we will set it there full HD in the front but you can if you want to save uh, a little memory on your memory card adjust those down um, image quality I want it on the highest uh, brightness we'll go ahead and leave that set to what it is for right now normal recording voice recording date and time display I actually don't want date and time being displayed I don't really want the speed showing so I'm going to turn that off on the display normal recording duration I'm used to three minute intervals um, so I'll go ahead and set to that event parking mode recording duration we'll go ahead and set that 
to two minutes. Auto switching to parking mode, that's fine. Rear camera power on, so if you want to turn it off, you can. Rear camera recording is on. Rear camera rotation is off. So yeah, I think that's about all that I need to do right now. I already went in and changed my Wi-Fi password and everything. So we should be good to go. We'll back out of that. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at some of the advanced features of the mobile app. And once again, we're gonna click on the little gear icon up here. And now we're gonna click firmware settings. All right, so from here, you have a few different things that you can do. The sensitivity settings are going to allow you to adjust the G sensor, motion detection, and speed alerts. Let's go there. Basically what this is gonna be used for is if someone were to run in the back of you or you get in any type of an accident, basically it's gonna cause the camera to record and save that footage. Um, so this is just adjusting the sensitivity of that. And you also have another G sensor, it's for parking mode. Um, similar concept for parking mode though, I do have the sensitivity turned up. A little bit higher now you will get notifications sometimes if it's in parking mode if you close your door or open the door and the camera senses it uh, but it's mainly for you know if somebody's trying to break inside of your car or something or somebody hits it while it's parked you'll get a notification and it'll save the footage motion detection parking mode basically this just adjusts the sensitivity of the motion detection so if you're in an area where you park your car and there's a lot of traffic going by and you don't want it to record every time something goes by at a distance, then you can adjust that down. So the speed alert basically allows you to set a specific speed. And then if you exceed that speed, the camera will alert you. And that pretty much does it for the sensitivity settings. Now other settings you can adjust, recording status LED, security LED front camera, security LED rear camera, uh, proximity sensor, voice recording on or off, voice guidance. And so all of these are pretty straightforward settings, so I'm not gonna dive too far in depth into these. So the push notification settings are basically going to determine which notifications get delivered to your mobile device. Okay, so now we're gonna be taking a look at the Blackview Viewer. And this is an application that you can install on a PC or a Mac. In my case, I have it on the Mac. So when you open it up, this is what you're going to see. It's going to ask you cloud or SD card. All right, so now we're going to be testing out the two-way communication feature of the Blackview viewer. So once this is active, she should be able to hear me in the car. Can you hear me? Testing audio from the inside of the car. All right, so as you can hear, that came through. So now we're going to have her go ahead and take the car out. So go ahead and uh, drive it around the block. All right, so she's probably about at least a mile away from my apartment right now. So I'm going to test out voice communication one more time. Did you hear me through the camera? Yeah, I hear you through the camera right now. All right, so as you can see, we're getting live footage of her driving right now and we're able to communicate. Um, I have the date and the time enabled right now and also have the miles per hour showing. So like I said, th this is a feature that you may want to use if you have a kid or somebody borrowing your car, your child, then you'll be able to monitor uh, how fast they're going. Another thing that you're going to notice here is that you're able to see the location of travel like on this map right here so we're gonna go ahead and uh, zoom in on that and it's in kilometers I need to adjust the setting on that on the uh, on the app but as you can see in real time you can see where she's actually traveling right there and we'll go ahead and make the map a little bit larger to get a better view of it on the map so this is a pretty pretty interesting feature I like it um, it also works kind of in reverse, so if you're viewing video footage from the SD card after it's already been recorded, it's going to have the same feature. You're, just, you're still going to be able to see exactly where you were on the map and, and the GPS, the miles per hour if that's enabled um, while you're watching the video. Okay, so overall this is a nice feature to have. Serves several different purposes. Um, 
And so that was just a little test so you guys could get an idea of how it works. Okay, so that was just really a brief overview of the Blackview app and the Blackview viewer. Um, there's a whole lot more features. Honestly, it will take me four or five videos to get through all of them. So what I did was add some links in the description of the video. So if you want even more information, go ahead and check those out. All right, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support and see you next time. Thank you.